This is a very interesting computer. This is an eMachines eTower 533ID. Pretty much your average budget computer from 1999. But this machine is interesting. It kind of sets itself away from the regular beige boxes because you could technically go into a computer store and walk out with one of these things for free in 1999. Although it does depend on how you look at that. Basically how that whole system worked is you would go into a computer store and buy the computer for upfront which is usually anywhere from $400 to $600. But then after a little while, you will start getting your money back after a few mail-in rebates. You have one from the store, one from e-machines themselves, and usually one from a dial-up internet service provider. And because of that, that kind of means that you had to pay for a year of dial-up internet from whatever provider. And then after all that, in theory, you would technically get all your money back in checks in the mail over a few months. And also, this is one of those computers that have the oddly amusing e-machines never obsolete sticker, which probably seemed funny if you knew literally anything about how computers worked at that time. But basically what this is, is this is a marketing tactic for the eMachines network. eMachines network was a $20 a month service that you could pay for to get internet and it led you to a direct upgrade path to a new computer every two years. This sales tactic really did work out well in their favor because they later became the number fourth largest computer manufacturer in North America. If you want more information about the eMachines network or if you want some history about eMachines as a whole, LGR has a great video covering these topics. I literally found this computer on the side of the road next to a bunch of other old tech stuff that I also picked up. And while this thing is in really good shape, it does need a few things to actually get it going. So how about we give this computer a second life into some retro gaming? This model of V-Tower is actually kind of interesting because I can't seem to find any information about it online. The closest model I can find information about is the 533IR and the 566IR. But other than that, I cannot seem to find any information that this thing even exists except for this website, but it doesn't really give any useful information at all. But this system is equipped with a 533 MHz Intel Celeron CPU with 64 megabytes of PC100, a 15 gigabyte hard drive, and 3D AGP graphics. That 3D AGP graphics is just a 4 megabyte AGP graphics chip, and I don't really expect to have anything good capability-wise. And for sound, this computer has a Crystal Sound Fusion 4280CM. Honestly, a basic little chip. I don't really expect it to have anything good capability-wise either, but that's not going to stop me from gaming on it later. Taking a look inside, I realized that the hard drive was missing, so I'm going to need to find a hard drive that will work for this thing. Also, I realized there was no CPU fan plugged in, and I know that the Celeron does need a CPU fan, so I'm going to grab one of those as well. And honestly, it was just kind of really gross inside, so I kind of wanted just to take apart the entire thing and clean it. And that is exactly what I chose to do. While disassembling, I've observed that basically none of the computer has been upgraded, everything is still original. It's still running the original 64 megabytes of RAM and the original 533 megahertz Celeron CPU. One of the first things I noticed about this computer is the motherboard was shockingly clean. Like, yeah, I was dusting it off, but there really wasn't a speck of dust on here. Going back to the case, I basically took everything out of it and it was still pretty dirty. But that's nothing that a quick rinse and steaming water can't fix. Next, I want to work on the front panel. Honestly, this really wasn't that dirty. All I really used was a damp paper towel, and I got most of the gunk off that way. I also took this time to dust off the power supply and floppy drive. The floppy drive was honestly probably one of the most grodiest things I've ever seen, so I'm glad I cleaned it. Now it's time to grab the things I need out of storage. Most of the drives that I have in there are bigger than what I needed, but I eventually found this. It's just a random Maxter 40 gigabyte drive. I was trying to see if I had a 15 gigabyte drive in here, but I apparently didn't. And for the fan situation, this was the smallest fan that I had, and it's a bit bigger than the actual heatsink. So I had an idea. I'm just gonna hot glue the fan to the heatsink. Well, I mean, to be fair, this actually did work way better than I was expecting, and it doesn't look actually as jank as I thought. Now that I have everything ready on the motherboard, I think it's time to actually start reassembling the system. And that went pretty much as well as you would expect. Although one thing I did notice while building is that the hard drive caddy just wasn't here. So I kind of had no choice but to lay the hard drive on the floor of the computer. I know I'll probably get roasted in the comments for this, but it was the only option I had. I am going to try to buy a hard drive caddy for this computer though at some point, just so I can actually have a proper mounting system. But now look how good this thing looks. Now the only thing we have left to do is turn on the computer and reinstall Windows 98 SE. The first thing I did was check to see if the date and time was set correctly, and it actually was. And it kept track of time within a few minutes, so that battery must still be pretty good in there. Now it's time for some Windows 98 SE. All I did was put in the installation disk and boot off of that, and then I enabled large disk support and just formatted the drive. After that, the setup didn't really take too long, and then I was on to installing drivers. Which I had a few issues with at first, but everything did end up installing correctly. I also went ahead and installed the Windows 98 USB support patch just to make it easier for me to copy files between my main computer and this computer. 
Next, I wanted to try some games, with the first game being Centipede. I kind of expected this to run well because it only requires a 133MHz Pentium processor with 16MB of RAM. And as expected, it pretty much ran smoothly. I know it kind of looks laggy on the camera, but it pretty much runs like this on the best computers you can install this to. So this is actually pretty average. Next, I want to try the original Half-Life. Honestly, this ran for the most part okay, but one of the main issues I had with this game just kept stuttering and I wasn't sure why. And also, I did try lowering the graphics settings and lowering the resolution, but none of that helped. I was still getting the same stuttering. But still, this is more than playable. If I was on a budget back then, I'd probably settle for this. And next, I wanted to try some Quake 3 Arena. Quake 3 is one of those games that I consider to be kind of hard for a machine like this to run. And I was right, this is definitely not perfect, but you know, it's somewhat playable. And you'd probably be able to get way better frames if you just turn down the settings anyway. I'm kind of surprised with the capabilities of that Intel 4 megabyte chip. It's actually kind of better than I thought. But hey, who needs Quake 3 when you have Duke Nukem 3D? Honestly, I had some issues with this as well. It was nothing really with the performance, but I had a lot of issues trying to get sound to work. Okay, so I'm on my actual Windows 98 gaming PC right now, and uh, this is what uh, Duke, the Duke Nukem theme song is supposed to sound like. Obviously, that really does depend on, you know, what your sound card is, you know. So let's switch back over to the E Tower, and uh, this is what it sounds like here. Instruments are just straight up missing and uh, sound effects just don't even work. Uh, I've tried every setting every IRQ everything uh, possible. I've, I've messed with system files. I just can't seem to get it to play uh, Just digital sound effects for some reason. I mean the sound works in Windows, right? And it and I can play MIDI terrible but uh, I mean other than that it doesn't necessarily play bad like here let's start Duke 3d right now as a test <laughs> this is so bad literally any sound card would do this is terrible. Uh-huh, that's an interesting, uh, issue. Okay, in-game. Interesting. Yeah, this computer is not anything special capability wise, but I love this never obsolete gray box. Seriously, dude, that sticker just cracks me up. This is about it for this video. If you like this video, hit like, dislike if you hate old computers in this e-tower, or if you just hate me. I have some more interesting videos coming up soon, so stay tuned.